Hi everyone, this is EMP, Electromagnetic Precursors for Earthquakes. Now I have a day off to uh, finally do a video on the massive earthquake in New Zealand. Depending on which site you're looking at, it was measured from about a 7.4, 7.5 to the um, SC had it measured at 7.9. So. Anytime you're getting up near the 8 magnitude range, this is just a huge earthquake. And unfortunately, there was a couple uh, fatalities associated with, with this one, and I did give a recent warning, advance warning on November the 9th. Now, it's very unfortunate, you know, this is all information that I found and put together is all free information available to anyone. I have no official scientific training and I'm proud to admit that it's just years and years of, um, especially the last uh, five years of just hardcore research. And so you can see that we did, this isn't the usual map that I use, but it's basically the same thing, um, TEC or ionospheric charging and capacitance. So you can see New Zealand's lit up pretty good there on the 9th, and then the usual maps that I use here, you can see uh, some blue just over New Zealand there, which isn't nearly as high as uh, the white and red, or the black and blue that I've always uh, mentioned, but that is definitely s still some uh, charging going on there, so you can see that from the 9th forward to the 12th that there was there was a cumulative charging going on there for sure. And as far as I know, there wasn't really, if any, advance warnings from any uh, mainstream scientists or, uh, of course, not the media. But the, it was very intriguing and then not all that surprising if you uh, follow my channel, what I post, that this is electromagnetic precursors. And I was looking at one article and I was talking about the uh, fault lines and the, and the plates uh, grinding together and this is producing the, uh, the earth lights uh, before the earthquake, but it's really totally backwards thinking because it's, it's electromagnetism that is driving not only your earthquakes and eruptions, but our weather, literally everything. Nature is 100% electrical, they still uh, fail to see this in any, uh, basically in any way, shape, or form, which is really, really sad, because of this uh, free, free uh, info and knowledge here, and it could literally be used to save lives, but unfortunately, there's, as I always say, there's no money in saving lives, which is really, really uh, sad, in my opinion, but very true, apparently. But anyways, try not to get depressed here. I'll just keep doing my thing. I don't make a penny off of any of this. Um, of course, as I've always shown, it's gamma rays or dielectric discharging, which is driving the capacitor model. And you can see we've had a hell of a lot of gamma ray spikes or dielectric discharges. Two huge ones here before the 12th. And that's what's charging up the ionosphere, which is one plate of the capacitor model. Earth is one giant capacitor. Ground beneath the ionosphere is the other plate and there's the dielectric insulator. Now in my previous video I went into great depth and it was by far my best explanation of the capacitor model so far so I'm not going to go into great depth in this video about that. Just see my previous video if you want to see how, exactly how the uh, capacitor model works in, in uh, detail and depth. So, gamma rays spiking here before the uh, ionospheric charging interval on the 12th, and a massive one, just a monster spike here uh, before the, uh, thir the 13th, and more smaller spikes here leading up to the to, to about 9.30 universal time and then it was just after 1100 universal time when we had the uh, 7.9 earthquake. 
Drake in uh, New Zealand. So if you look at, let's look at Beijing's magnetometer first. You can see I showed you those gamma ray spikes at 9:30 Universal Time, and you can see a massive magnetic disruption right there. And we had the earthquake just at just a few hours after that. And then New Zealand, basically the same thing. 9.30, huge peak in magnetic activity there, and then just after 11, we had the earthquake. So it's in instantaneous action at a distance here, folks, and this is what, one thing I'll mention quickly is mainstream science and physics don't um, get. Gamma rays is uh, the top of the electromagnetic spectrum, and then on the other end would be the bottom is infrared, but it's all light. They're trying to you know, explain gamma rays and look for a driver of gamma rays. It's all 100%, literally 100% non-physical. Uh, Nikola Te Tesla said himself, um, said himself, one of his quotes was, if you want to know the secrets of the universe, think in frequency, wavelength, and energy. Now, they, they look at this somewhat, but the, the secret is when he's talking about energy, it's dielectric capacitance. Uh, electromagnetism is driven by dielectricity or ether, which no one can disprove. The silly uh, materialist scientists don't understand um, anything beyond the effects of the of, of electromagnetism on on uh, mass and matter. But dielectricity terminates as electromagnetism. Now, dielectricity cannot be quantified because once again, it is 100% non-physical. And if you understand the non-duality of nature, like everyone thinks that, oh, Nikola Tesla is you know, known for electricity and magnetism, but actually that was only like one-tenth of his research. The majority of his research was actually dielectricity or the ether, which no one can really refute. It's like trying to refute unmanifest potential, like before lightning strikes, as silly humans are walking around, oh, nothing is going on. No, there's a hell of a, uh, there's a hell of a lot going on. There's uh you don't think that Mother Nature, uh, Mother Nature's strongest force, dielectricity, has extreme uh, unmanifest potential. So there's huge amount of uh, unmanifest potential everywhere, but you can't see it, you can't quantify it, and then lightning strikes, instantaneous action at a distance, right there, and that's manifest potential. Now, to us humans, it looks like there are two different things, but no, they are simultaneously one and the same and only looks different. But nature never has and never will deal in duality. That's why Nikola Tesla and other great legends of real science vehemently denied the virtual particle nonsense and also said that math has replaced experiments in science for the most part. And he called that completely insane because that's what it is. Now, I hope that clears things up. It sounds extremely complicated, but if you if you research and uh, Tesla only hinted here and there of dielectricity, aka the ether, but if you read his stuff, you can see that's where the majority of his uh, research was. Of course, you'll never hear this mentioned in uh, virtually any school on the planet, and you got to do a hell of a lot of research. But it's out there if you look hard. Um, I mentioned Ken Wheeler before. He's done epic amount of research into people like not only Nikola Tesla, uh, heavy side, Oliver Heaviside, James Clerk Maxwell, and all of all of those folks that knew um, elect electricity, but not only that, dielectricity and electromagnetism far, far better than anyone else now, in my honest opinion. You can disagree if you want, but do the research and you know, don't take my word for it. Do your own research and come to your uh, come to your own conclusions. But the truth is out there, as they say. So, anyways, that earthquake was uh, just after 1100 Universal Time, and gamma rays, as I just showed, were going up to about 9:30, where we had the last spike just before the earthquake, and then the solar induction. Remember, I showed before that. The Earth acts as a solar transformer, so 
approximately this is interesting synchronicity going on here uh, big spike here on the auroral electrojet in Kyoto and then we had the earthquake just a few hours after that There was also another earthquake on uh, November the 13th as well in India 21-22. So there was also solar induction blowing going on just before that earthquake as well. And here's a neutron monitor in China, again, that was just cosmic rays, but it's all dielectric discharging. And you can see that the peak of the, of the day was at about 9.30 universal time as well. So it was a cosmic ray, gamma ray, solar combo, triple threat, and it hit hard, as you can plainly see. So once again, back to the 100 universal time on the 12th you can see where that right where that earthquake struck was red and white so extreme ionosphere charging or capacitance at, at that time and I believe that's it for now and this is EMP electromagnetic precursors for earthquakes thanks for watching take care